Arise, shine, for this is your time. This is the day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Why? Because we got breath. You got breath. That means you still got life. You still got life. That means you still got an opportunity to complete your assignments. Blessings. Welcome to Arise, Shine, Morning Devotional and Prayer. Well, we don't have powerful prayer, but we pray to a powerful God that we understand this is the day the Lord is made. And so before we get moving, we like to get started with giving God praise, giving God thanks, acknowledging for all the things that he's done is doing for the protection that he's given unto you day in and day out for covering you in the midst of trials tribulation god says i will never leave you nor forsake you so we just give god thanks this morning we give god praise and say lord god you're wonderful you're mighty you're good thank you for empowering us thank you for strengthening us thank you lord god for making ways when it seemed not to be any ways lord god thank you for keeping me in the right state of mind thank you for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Thank you for your precious Holy Spirit that in, that's in me right now, that abides in me. Thank you, Father, for protecting us, covering us over our children, over our spouses, over our communities, over our houses. Thank you for everything that we didn't see that was not done, but you protected us. Thank you for your ministry spirits that you have covering us, going before us, surrounding us. Lord God, this morning, we're grateful. We're grateful to know you. We're grateful, Lord God. We don't take things for granted. We have an attitude of gratitude because someone else didn't wake up this morning. Someone doesn't have the ability to, Lord God, just to lift their voice or to wave their hands or to walk or certain things that we take for granted. So, Father, this morning, thank you for the little things. Lord God, that we see you in. Thank you for the food upon our table. Thank you for the clothes upon our back. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to go to and from. Thank you for us having a condescence of who you are, that our minds is straight. Our minds is set on thee, Lord God. Thank you for breaking the barriers. Thank you for salvation, eternal life, Lord God, that even if we don't have everything, if we have Christ, we have everything. So we you this morning for having an opportunity to come before you have an opportunity to endure you for who you are and all that you have done in our life we press towards the mark of a high calling we press towards you lord god as we get to know you more it's not about asking for this or ask for that but it's about Lord God, giving praise and thanks we understand that you have already given us everything to life and godliness so we come to you for direction. We come to you for instructions that we, Lord God, maximize everything that you have already given us. Who else is like the Lord? Who can compare to the Lord? There's no one for he is good. Psalms 118, it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good because his mercy endures forever. Let Israel not say this, his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endures forever. Let them now that fear the Lord say that his mercy endures forever. I called upon the Lord in distress. The Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can men do? Do unto me. Have that mindset this morning that the Lord is on your side. And since He's on your side, what can men do to you? If God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, when we have that mindset, when we step our feet out and go to our various destinations, you go to places where you feel like everybody's against you. You may be even feeling that in your own household sometimes. But the Bible says in the Bible declares that if the Lord be on your side, who can be against you? We fear not. We doubt not. Why? Because we have God inside us. For that transformation, we give God thanks for this morning. Uh, to understand that daily does he load us with benefits. The psalm was penned. He has healed us of all our diseases. He has delivered us 
from the pit, that he has crowned us with love and kindness and tender mercy, that he has given our mouth good things to enjoy. And so this morning, I want you to have a praise. I don't care what happened last night. I know the thoughts was racing through your mind about what you're going to do, how it's going to work out. No, let that go and let the God who has created you give you that peace that surpasses understanding. That your mind be at rest this morning. I speak peace this morning to someone to encourage you that God is for you if he's on your side. None that's going to overtake you. The Bible says in the Bible declares, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It will form, but you have a mindset. It shall not prosper. And on that, I'm going to get into the devotional part. Yesterday, I was speaking on I shall. And I said yesterday that you shall succeed. And I'm going to de- dig a little deeper in that. To have an I shall mindset, the mentality that I shall um, the foundation scripture was in Isaiah um, chapter 40, starting at verse 31. It says, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. The prophet was telling us that they that wait upon the Lord who are Rooted, strengthened in him. That he is the rock. He is the foundation. Um, Not sitting on a couch saying, I'm just going to wait here until God comes. Not laying in your bed. But it is a, a mindset, a mentality. I shall mentality. Wait on the Lord. Because I know he has already given me the victory. That is already done. So a couple key points I want to continue with this. Developing the I shall mentality. One, step one. Get the word I can't out. Uh, When you say I can't instead of I shall, you already limit yourself to ever progressing. And some of us have that word so in depth in their vocabulary. When someone always asks you something, oh, I can't. When they need you to do something in the church, I can't. When your husband or your wife asks you, oh, I can't. It's always, I can't. Instead of seeing why you can. Uh, The Bible says, um, if we take the C off, uh, we have the ant. The Bible says, consider the ant. Um, The ant doesn't say, I can't. The ant doesn't have a mindset of why he can't do it. But what he was programmed to do, he does it. Um, he goes out. He doesn't know if he's going to find food or not. He doesn't say, I can't. Uh, he didn't say, oh, it's raining. He didn't say it's windy. Um, he didn't say the dirt is, is too deep. We can't, we can't move. No, no. They work and they go to do that which they've been called to do. So I want you to have a mindset. And we're developing a new mindset, the, the I shall mindset mentality, where like the ant says, uh, the Bible says, consider the ant. It has no one over it. It has no one controlling it, but it's already programmed and knows what to do. It already knows where to go. The sense it moves it to where it needs to be. It's in its right place. It's developed. If it's a worker ant, it works. If it's the queen, it if it's the one who protects and guard, they already know. They don't have a limitation on, I can't lift this. They have no awareness of why they can't do something. They just go forth and do it. So I want you, when you have that mindset, always, oh, I can't do this. Or, oh, uh, well, I never that done this before. No, I want you to have an ant mentality. Before you open your mouth with the C word and, and, and saying you can't, consider the ant. And the ant, though it's very small, the least. But God took notice of the ant, what he developed, and put it into the word and said, consider the ant. That it's not lazy, that it's, it, it, it's focused on what the assignment is. I want you to have an I shall mentality. And the first point I want you to make is I'm racing the can't mentality, but I'm adapting the ant mentality that goes forth. Though it's very small, it lifts us three times its body weight. Um, though nobody's telling it to get up, it knows that I have to go to work. I have to do this, and it does it. 
and nobody's telling it anything. So I want you to race the can't and consider the ant as you're moving forth, as you're going forth. Um, two, point two in developing the mindset of I shall is that you need to believe only. Um, Jesus said this often. Um, do you believe? Amen. Do you believe? It was a situation when one of the rulers of the synagogue came, Jairus, his daughter was dead um, or dying. And he went to the master and said, Rabbi, I need you to come lay your hands on my child. As they're moving through a crowd, through the press, um, one woman went and she received because she had an I shell mentality. If I can just go and touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. So it was a delay. And as they're moving forth, people from the house came and said, don't trouble the master, your daughters already have passed. But what did Jesus say to Jairus? He says, don't doubt, only believe. Um, some of us doubt too much when the situations get tough. Um, we have soon something happens, we let it go. <clears throat> Excuse me, we let it go. Instead of putting a trust in God, putting the assurance in God. I, I believe that God is saying to someone, believe only, don't doubt. Um, I said this before, I say it to someone today. When doubt comes, doubt your doubt. When the mindset is like, I doubt this is going to happen. When your mind is like, oh, uh, seem like it's going to be another year like this. Doubt your doubt. And adapt that I shall. I shall continue to move forward. And so when the enemy tries to throw the arrows, like I said before, the weapons will form. Just have a mindset that I'm going to doubt my doubt. Uh, when when someone says, I don't, I don't think you're going to be able to do that. <clears throat> Excuse me, say I doubt that. Uh, your, your people uh, close to you say, oh, I don't think I don't think you're gonna be able to do that. I don't I don't think you're gonna receive your healing. Um, say I doubt that. I doubt my doubts in 2024. Um, as I move forth, yes, situations and circumstances is gonna come, but have an I shall mentality. I shall move forth. I shall go forth and do that which God says. So point two is what? Doubt your doubt in your mind. Amen. Point three. Developing the I shell mentality. Meditate. <clears throat> Meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the promise of God. Meditate on what God has spoken unto you. The Bible says in the Bible declares in Joshua that meditate on the word day and night, then you shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Why is it important with the meditation? Because out of the abundant heart, the mouth speaks. So when we speak certain things, it's because we meditate on certain things. And then our speech, our speech, what we say, um, forms the atmosphere. I spoke on that before. But the meditation clears out the old in order to place in the new. Because if you've been through years of years of doubt, if you've been years of years of I can't, you have to get reprogrammed. The, the mind has to be revised to have an I shall mentality. And so you have to meditate on what the word says, that you are more than a conqueror. You have to meditate on what the word says in order to move into the place where God has said for you to be. To continue to not stop as Jairus. If he would have meditated on that. Um, the man who came and said your daughter is dead. If he meditated on that and said. And agreed with the man and said. Rabbi trouble yourself. Don't worry about it. I'm just going to go. I'm going to mourn the death of my daughter. I'm just going to go and comfort my wife. Um, I'm sorry for bothering you. But no. No. Jesus gave him a seed and said only believe so then Jairus had to believe on what was before him what did God say and what did God speak to you as you meditate this week on what God has said unto you meditate on what the word and the promises of the word 
And no, I'm not saying this overnight. You you meditate for <laughs> one hour and you say, I don't feel no change. No, he says, the Bible declares, it says, meditate day and night. It's always day. It's always night. So have a continued, constant meditation mode on what the word says. And watch how your life starts to grow. You shall get into that mindset of I shall. As I meditate on what God's promises is. I meditate on the promise, not on the problem. Amen. You meditate on the promise, not on the problem. And too many times we meditate on the problem. And the problem seems to be bigger than our father. But how can that be? If God is the one who created everything, why would we give more of our attention onto the problem instead of giving our attention to the problem solving, which is the Lord Jesus. He is the one who solves the problem. He has already given a way. He says, I make a way out of no way. So point three, meditate. So you have, let me share this with you. You have the word of God that, that you can meditate on. But the enemy, the devil, doesn't have a Bible. But you meditate more on what Satan says. You meditate more on what your friend says. But you have encounters with God through the written scripture that you can meditate on. And say, oh, there was a woman who was who had issues, but she pressed her way. You have encounters when Jesus said, that take no thought on what you should eat or drink for I know that you have a need for these things and what he was saying even in that text he says meditate on the kingdom that you are part of the kingdom and a good father provides for his children that the one thing that you're probably missing is because what you've been meditating on don't give room for the enemy that doesn't have a word but he's trying to implant a word but you can speak what the word says over your situation today meditation point four i want you to as you get into i shall mentality uh, the relationship with the father really matters as you develop the relationship, I want us to have a relationship. Um, God is not a gene. Um, he's not our uncle. He's not our auntie. He's not. He is the creation, creator of all creations. And as you develop the relationship, as Adam walked in the still cool of the day with the Lord, that in the presence um, Things will change. Uh, the Bible says, in his presence is fullness of joy, and at his right hand pleasures forevermore. Point four, I want you to have and develop a deeper relationship. Um, they that know their God shall do, shall do, shall do great experts. But do you know your God or do you know of your God? Um, point four is you gotta have a a deeper relationship with the Father, a deeper relationship. Uh, with the one who created you. Why? Because he will show and direct you on who you truly are. The identity that you're looking for. Um, to be able to move. That you can't be stuck and stagnant any longer. Is to the relationship that we have with the Lord. Um, a refilling of him. Do you know God? Do you know you, you truly know him? Because as you know him. The can't will be removed. Uh, that I won't will be removed. Um, we we want God to use us mightily. We we want that. We say that. Uh, but how can you know what to do if you don't have a relationship of the one who called you into it? Um, not just having a form of godliness, knowing Him from afar, but it's a deeper thing that God wants you to get it into. Amen. God wants you this year. And I'm working on it so much. And I'm enjoying the fact that I'm back in fellowship with the Lord. That my prayer time, um, the commune time, the commune with him. Um, it's gotten into a deeper relationship. And so now I have a more sense of awareness of him daily. That the Holy Spirit is in me. Leading, directing, guiding. And as I had this. 
as I have this, things are moving up. Things are changing. I'm changing the atmosphere around my home. I'm changing the atmosphere as I go and do my daily thing because I'm more aware of God. I don't have this mindset of I can't. I don't make excuses as I usually were doing and saying, well, is this, is this person's fault, is that person's fault? No, great is he that's in you, that he's that's in the world. So if you understand, and sometimes as I'm just driving, I put my hands on my stomach, I said, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you're embodying me, that you're in me. I, mean, I have a heightened sense, an awareness. I want you to develop a awareness, a deeper relationship as you go forth, as you move forth. Speak and commune with the Lord like never before. It's time to go to deeper things that we can't be in the same place and doing the same thing every day. That's some for, that's some for, that is for someone directly that you've been your life has been in turmoil your life has been kind of the same you've been on this constant cycle break it by getting in the fellowship with the Lord um, don't just read the word but let the word get imparted in you and the more that you develop the more that you have this sense and heightened sense of God he will start giving you instructions and directions. Your mind will go from I can't to I shall. From I won't to I will. I will finish. I will do. I will go forth. I will complete. Why? Because you're completed with him. And so if you understand more of the Lord, as we get more into the things of the word of God, we have it back in Isaiah 40. When we read, we say, but they that wait upon the Lord, that's what shall renew their strength. You had two women, Mary and Martha. Mary was doing the thing that was needed. She was at the feet of Jesus. One was concerned about all the other things. And one got rebuked. Though she was not doing the wrong thing, but her mindset was on the wrong thing. Get your mind on the right thing, which is the Lord. But they that wait upon the Lord you get in that position that you're sitting before the Lord. Shall renew their strength and mount up with wings as an eagle. You're going to mount up because God, our Lord, is going to lift you up. Lift you up out of that pit. Lift you up of that rut. Lift you up out of that woe is me. The woe is me is about to be delivered from you. You won't have that mindset anymore. And speaking of remember, the last, the last point I want to make on this I shall development, I, I shall mindset. Remember, the and it's back in Isaiah 2. He says, remember not the former things. Let's just go to it. Isaiah 43, starting in verse 18. It says, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Okay, it says, behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will make a way in the wilderness. Are you in the wilderness? And rivers in the desert. Are you in a dry place right now that you feel like things are just drying up around you? I shall mentality. Remember ye not the former things. Remember not the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Don't hold on to the old. When you hold on to the old, it keeps you from the new. When you hold on to the old, you can sit, you continue to have that I can't mindset. Because that's one thing that's holding you back. The old things, the old ways, the things that didn't happen, the things that didn't work out, the, the choices that you make did, did not. So then what happens, it, it cripples you. Amen. What happens is it, it cripples you because then your mindset, going back to the meditation part, then you meditate on why it didn't work. You don't open yourself up to a new relationship because of the old relationship. Uh, you feel like God let you down because certain things didn't happen, but it could be the thing where God didn't allow it to happen would have destroyed you. Or the thing that you thought was your portion wasn't your portion. And so you remember the rejection. You remember that 
you 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 had you felt like you was trusting in God, but you felt like God let you down because that thing did not go the way that you should. But God says, consider not the old thing because God was trying to do a new thing through you. And yes, we make choices. Our choices has consequences, um, but we don't we don't meditate and hold the resentment of what didn't happen, of things that didn't go our way. Um, because God's trying to make a new way. Uh, you say, well, man, I got, how's this going to happen? Um, because I really expect that this was the way that it was supposed to happen. But God said, no, behold, I would do a new thing now. It shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. Your wilderness experience, I believe, was the thing that God was trying to get you to back in the relationship that you can go into a deeper relationship with God the wilderness the dryness the place was the place to get you back into place that the separation was needed for your elevation that you can move forth in I shall mentality because now you have that experience and you know what it feels like. You know and you remember that God was still with you in the midst of your wilderness. Yea, do you walk through the valley of the shallow. Yet you walking through some things. Things that hurt. Things that was um, that you felt shouldn't have been your portion. But the Bible says in the Bible the place all things work together for good. Man, I got to lost someone. I lost someone too. How does that work for my good? In the midst of it, was God there? Was he speaking to you? Did he send one? Did he send someone to you to help comfort you? Um, so you think and meditate on that. That in the midst of that circumstance, God developed. Nope, God doesn't have to send sickness. God doesn't take people just to be taking people and all this stuff no but i believe that in the midst of it god brings something out of it god can bring something out of you god can pull something out of you that needs to be let go god can pull something out of you that needs to be changed to become the person that you need to become i need you to get a i shell mentality so let's recap real quick number one Remove the can't and consider the ant. Number two, believe, believe, believe only. Have a belief, believe only. Doubt your doubts. Three, on how you meditate is important. What are you meditating on? What are you giving your mind over to? He said, I'll keep you in perfect peace whose mind is set on the, are you meditating on the things of God? Number four, develop, develop a deeper relationship with God be intentional about that be intentional about that be intentional <sighs> um, mm, when you re release it unto the Lord and you just come as father as Abba as you come in to that relationship watch things shift I'm not saying something just to say it, but I I'm experienced. I'm in. I'm walking in that thing now. I'm walking in it now. It's such a wonderful thing when you're in the presence of God. And now you, I'm up twelve, just praying fellowship. I'm up at eight ten. I'm in the work. That 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 thing I was missing. That thing. And now that I've, I've, I've brought myself back in that position. I can see things shifting. I can think I see things shifting in my mental. I see things shifting that I am moving forward. It's like a recharge, um, a refilling. I declare that somebody are refilling this morning. Um, and number five, remember, not the former things. Um, I said last week, um, you have to unload in order to get a new download. So you have to let old things go in order for new things to come to you. Um, God wants to do a new thing, but he can't do the new thing. You can't move into the shell, I shell mentality because you're holding on to the old. So your mind has got you 
bombarded down of the things that didn't happen and the things that you was worried about and the things that you couldn't change and the things that was remaining the same. But God says, I'm going to bring the change when you look go of the old thing. Amen. Look go of the old thing and let God move forward in you. And then he can work through you. And behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. I declare that something springing forth. The things that you was waiting for as you released it, the thing was held up. It was bound up. It was clogged up because of you holding on to the old past and old ways and your tradition, your religion. And God was trying to bring you a refreshing, renewing, and revising, um, but he couldn't because you still was holding on to it. So, so remember you not the former things. Nope, they happened. The situation happened. Um, um, you did wrong. They did wrong. But glory to God, his mercy is new each and every day. No, consider the old things. Behold, I will do a new thing. I declare a new thing in your life this morning. So that was point five on developing I shall mentality. And I declared yesterday that you shall succeed. Um... And I think what happens a lot of times that even when I'm speaking like this, some people, they'll be like, well, they, they have this mindset of you need to, how I want to say this, some people out there has this misconception of God, I believe. And at times when certain promises wasn't made, to the children of Israel, to men, women of God, was because of disobedience. It wasn't like God was trying to bring wrath. Like they want, yes, we are. My, my fellowship, the Bible says, the Bible declares, says this. Who's forgiven much loves much. I love people. I want to help people as much as I can, whatever God sent me to. I want to speak life into people. Why? Because I know what God has brought me out of. I know what God's grace and mercy done for me. And I understand that the troubles, situations, things I went through was the things that I was doing. I, I don't see, I, I repent unto the Lord. So when he opened my mind and I seen certain things, now I can go to a person who's been in a lot of cycles and stagnations and stuff like that. Now I can reciprocate the love of the father so god so loved the world yes he will bring the hammer down do all this he he's rich in mercy <sighs> we got to get it right um uh, who's forgiven much loves much um who's forgiven much love much So thank you for those who are joining the first time. Please like, share, um, link in the bot in the bio. YouTube is where these videos be uploaded at a later time because you know they only stay up here for a while. And I'm not sure you that you can even go back and watch the uh, rebroadcasts on TikTok. I don't believe so, but anyway, go to YouTube, follow me on that. I appreciate the hearts. I appreciate that time. So let's pray. Um, I shall, I shall, and, and write that out, I shall, uh, I shall be a loving father, I shall be a loving wife, I shall move forth in the thing that God has called me to do, I shall be in the best shape of my life, I shall meditate on the goodness of the Lord, and meditate on the word of the Lord, I shall get in my word, like never before, I shall, I shall, I shall. Changing it from I can't and I won't to I shall, I will. Amen. Father, this morning, I thank you for those who have joined me. I thank you for those who are under the sound of my voice that in this season, Lord God, we're developing our I shall mentality. That we shall move forth in power and strength and demonstration of who you are in our life. That, Lord God, we're moving the can't and I won't. That we will do that which we've been sent to do. Lord God, all the things that has been interrupted, all the things that's been held up, all the things that's been bound up due to our not walking in your principles that you have given to us. 
I speak in someone's life this morning, Lord God, that they will move from I can't today shall. I declare for their life that good things are coming, pressed down, shaking together, running over. I speak the favor of God in their life this morning. Favor the grace that you have given. Lord God, I declare and decree in their life that no longer will they have the doubt, but they will doubt that, but they will believe only. They will believe in you, believe in your word, believe in the spoken thing that you spoke to them in the midnight hour. Believe in the dream and the vision that you have given to them. I speak they have the mindset to believe. This morning, Father God, I thank you that we're reversing our meditation. We're meditating on what is good, the good report of the Lord. And who report will we believe in? I declare that they will believe in the report of the Lord this morning. Let their mind be stayed on thee. Let the mind be at peace. Let the mind be at rest. Let them cast their cares upon you because you care for us. And so as you care for us, we can move. We can move. We can move into position. We can move into the place which you have desired from the beginning. Father, that this life that you have given us, we will live it to the fullest and do that through you. We thank you as we develop a greater relationship this morning that we have a relationship that's not fake that's not phony that lord god does not only come to you when we stand in need for you have supplied the need but we have a desire to know you like never before we have a desire to come into fellowship we have a desire to move out of the old and to step in to the new father as you spoke in your word you said to consider not to remember not the former things or the things of the past i speak that they pass is the past and they're moving forth Lord God, not to be hindered, not to be restricted of things of old. I declare all things are becoming new. New because you said it in your word. I'm not speaking out of my own, but I'm speaking according to what your word says. I declare over their life a new season, a new beginning. That the Lord God, the King of the Caterpillar, caterpillar the old things that had them bound that had them stuck even when you were the one bringing it forth because you wanted them to get back into fellowship i declare and decree lord god that they're set free from the old mindset from the old trap of the enemy i declare that they're set free from their own selfishness they they're set free from their own limitations of their minds that they will arise shine but it is their time arise to the men they've been called to be. Arise to the women that you called them to be. Arise in that circumstance, Lord God, that they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. I thank you right now that I speak in their life. They, they will be planted. They will be rooted by the rivers of the living water. And out of them shall flow rivers. Out of them shall flow rivers. Of living water, I prophesied in their life and over their life that Lord God, that they about to take a flight as they mounting up, as you had declared in your word, they will soar. They will not, Lord God, stay down any longer, but they will soar up to the top. They will reach you up to the top. They will go to the mountain and to fellowship. They have come unto Mount Zion in the name of Jesus, and I declare they will triumph in victory. Lord God, thank you that the weapons is formed. Because with the weapons that was formed, Lord God, we were able to understand that if you be for us, who could be against us? Thank you for everything that has happened, that it brought us closer to you. And now we know you as healer. We know you as a deliverer. We know you as a provider. We know you as the father. And we come, we can ask, we can seek, we can not. And that we ask for the things that we need. We seek you for the things that we desire. And we not that we could come closer to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be not weary in well doing. Be not weary in well doing. Be not weary in well doing. That you're doing all that you know to do. Don't be weary. But continue to move forth, continue to go forth, because the breakthrough is on its way. A weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. So as you're moving, don't get weary, don't get tired. Whatsoever a man sow, that shows they reap. As you're reaping, your reaping season is coming, your harvest season is coming. But continue, 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 continue. 
the, I hear the Lord saying, continue to someone out there. Continue in the things of God. That it's going to reap. You're about to reap that which you've been sowing. You're like, Lord, I've been faithful. I've been moving. I've been trying, but things are not moving. But the uplifted, the shifted. Remember, I have, you need the I shall mentality. You will continue. Don't give up. Don't give up. You're right there. And God's about to open up the door. The storehouse door is about to be opened up. Things was bound up. Things were shut down. The enemy was trying to take you, take you out. He was trying to bring forth and that you wasn't going to trust because you thought that you was doing everything you knew how to do, but things was not moving. I need you to have I shall, I will, I must. I don't want you to give up. I don't want you to give in. I want you to move forth. Amen. Don't give up. Don't give in. God's not done with you. God's not finished with you. Uh, great things are in store for you that come forth in the fullness of what God has called you to do. Amen. Thank you for joining me. Arise, shine, morning devotional and prayer. Listen, if you haven't yet, follow the links in the bio, all the information, YouTube channel, the other social medias. I thank you that you're going to have an I shall mindset. That you shall be more than a conqueror. That you shall overtake. And the Bible says, ask for the nations. For the nations are yours. Uh, move forth in power and authority that God has given to you. Um, not to be uh, complacent. But you will finish the race with speed, with, with power, with excellency. Um, because the, mas the master abides in you. Amen. Thank you guys once again. Tomorrow, same time, same place, 7.30. Remember, Jesus loves you. I love you. Till next time, be blessed.